<clears throat> I want to say good morning, but it's not morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hi, cubies and newbies. How are you today? I am Sunshine. And I'm happy. This is the ABQ method for solving Rubik's Cubes. And Friday evenings, I just kind of play. But uh, I'm happy to demonstrate. This is Formula A is four moves. So one, one row, one column, bottom row, right column usually. Uh, if you want to work on, I want to do boxes, it's the center row, center column. <clears throat> Four moves, and it brings a piece to the top. It affects all six sides as it does so, and so we, I only use it for corners and absolute centers, and if I'm in a hurry, the first face. Hi, how are you doing? How, how are you today, Wifey? Okay, um, <clears throat> quick demonstration, formula A is four moves, formula B is eight moves. For every left there's a right, for every up there's a down, it's a mathematical zero, it's a commutator, which means it only moves three pieces of the cube at a time. Formula B, that is. Formula A only moves the pieces on top that you want to move. I've always been, oh, you've always been at school, okay, well, um, I, I'm here Friday evenings. I w I'm here Saturday mornings too. So if you don't have school on Saturday, you can join me tomorrow. But you are, it's 10 a.m. where you are, it's 9 a.m. where I am. So it'd be pretty, I'd have to get up pretty early in the morning to <laughs> stream before you go to school. <clears throat> but thanks for saying hi. <clears throat> Formula B is one row and two columns. Always moves three pieces around. If you use if you if you use the outside corners, outside columns, these three corners move around, which I have done. So, so I'm going to do it again. Up, up, down, down, and this piece one more time. This piece is going to go here. This piece is going to go here, and this piece is going to go here. So once is the equivalent of, of clockwise, twice is the equivalent of counterclockwise, and three times is back to the year beginning, uh, wherever that was. Um, and if you if you alter what the columns are that you're using, for example, an outside column and an inside column, <coughs> then uh, you you work on edge pieces. You don't have to memorize which two, which columns do what. You just have to pick a piece that that you want to move, determine which direction you want to throw it. And the, for where it's going to land is the first column, where it begins is the second column. So up, up, down, down. And one more time, this piece will go here, this piece will go here, and this piece will go here. But it only moves three pieces, so you never have to worry about messing up what you've already done. <coughs> because two of the pieces automatically are wrong, because the piece that you're using it on is not where it's supposed to be, and the piece that didn't spot is not where it's supposed to be, because this one can only go there. So, of the three, you know at least two of them are wrong. Generally, all three of them are wrong. Okay, so that's it. That's all you need to do to manage every complexity Rubik's Cube, because there's always going to be, if there's any piece that needs to move, there are at least three pieces to move. Uh, from if for the center pieces, sometimes it looks like there's only two, but that's because two of them are the same color. For the edge pieces, sometimes it looks like there's an only two, which is what we call a parity. But a parity is a lie. Uh, it, there's never two pieces and only two pieces. There's always three, and the third piece that you can't see is the piece that you can't see. So whatever, whichever slice of the cube, whichever inner slice of the cube touches the parity, that slice is a quarter turn off. You rotate that slice one quarter turn either direction, and now you can fix the edges without the parity. The parity has gone poof, and we can proceed. Uh, the, the, you can always learn the parity algorithms. That's fun, yeah, I guess. But I just do I do the centers last so that the center so the center qu quarter turn correction doesn't displace anything I've already done, and then everything is set. Is set. 
Uh, this is this is my funnest cube. <laughs> One of my funnest cubes. This is a Whit Eaton 3x3x9. Three by three by uh, it's it the yellow and white are as if it's a 3x3. Three three. And the other slide has nine slides. So it is the equivalent of a 9x9 nine nine with banding. Uh, so uh, this is can also be solved with the AB cube method. The only the only things that you need need to remember with this cube that as, as opposed to this one <clears throat> is that uh, as you start solving it you have to make sure that the center the center cube area is horizontal so that when you get the yellow and white done the centers will turn if one of them is, is this way instead it won't turn so you just line up the centers and then solve it as if you solve itself the solve your yellow as normal solve your white as normal and when they're solved and you get to the three by three by nine side the only difference is the adaptation is instead of going instead of the, the top row going quarter turns because quarter turns means you can't work with the center layers so every horizontal then becomes two instead of one and with that the formula be adapted you can work you can solve the edges and the centers just fine so the formula a b adapted solves this one and again the only adaptation is that you have to keep you have to line up your centers before you start uh, does anyone have any re any <laughs> requests that i what i should do first um also it of course the mirror cubes are just are just the same as a cube <clears throat> the difference being that instead of colors on the side, you're dealing with distances, absolute distances from the center. So you have uh, heights that are that need, need to match up instead of colors that you need to match up. This is a five by five mirror cube. It was hand, it was uh, 3D printed and then hand glued on, not by me but by somebody. I think they have better ones out there, and it's not magnetic, so it's just it's just a pain to try to line up the layers to solve, but it's still pretty. So. It will sit on my shelf as soon as shelf as soon as there's a tongue twister. <laughs> okay. Um, this is my seven by. When I'm bored, this is the one I pick up because it's it's complex enough that it gives me it, it, <laughs> the smaller ones get solved too quick and i don't have time to get into my meditative state and the longer ones get boring because there's too many pieces so this is my favorite just is the, the perfect size to to solve formula a and b also works on every color every complexity of minks just formula a and just formula b is all you need I have a 7 by as well. I'm not sure where I put that one though. I'm solving it. To demonstrate, uh, for me to work on the columns, to, to move three, to move the columns around, one row, two columns, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and these three columns moved. Each of these three columns moved one space. Each of these three corners moved one space. Again, and it's the other clockwise, the counterclockwise, and again, and we're back to start. So formula A B solves either one of these. Um, the difference there's an order of operations on the minxes. You want to do the star pieces before the non-star pieces, so you don't have to re redo work you already done. Reset. Oh, here's my seven by. Isn't that pretty? Isn't it pretty? Alrighty. So I'm going to I'm going to mess up my three by nine. And the the thing the thing about messing up the three by nine is in order to if if all I do is mess up the nine side and then scramble the three side and then try to solve it. When I script the three sided solve, the nine side is just a one uh, just a twist away from being solved. So it doesn't really give you a a, a challenge unless unless you scramble it and then solve it by shape only. 
and then with the colors random, then you slide the nine by side, and that that means that, uh, and then scramble it again. That gives you a, a challenging centers and edges on the nine by side that you don't get otherwise. Someone left. That's okay. All right, I'm going to I'm going to solve this by okay. So again, I'm going to solve this by shape and not by color. So I start off with I just pick <clears throat> pick a side. <laughs> this is uh, I'm going to this is going to be my top and my opposite sides. So I have so the center top and bottom. So the center I just have to make sure it's horizontal before I start. And then at that point in time, everything at, if formula A and formula B is not going to miss, not going to twist the center. Uh, so that will stay that way. So let's bring a yellow to the top. There's a yellow, no yellow here or here, but or here, but now there is. So formula A will bring it to the top. Less than five or less times because six gets you back to where you started. So by the mathematics of the cube, yellow is on top. So I slide it out of the way to keep to protect it, and I work with it with the the next corner. I'm going to, I'm going to do formula A until yellow is on top on all four corners. Uh, no, no yellow here or here. Rotate the bottom by quarter turns until the answer is yes. And then formula A will bring it to the top. And for every left, there's a right. So this is it's t moving, but it's staying 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 horizontal. Because formula A will not mess it up. When the yellow is on top, slide the top to protect it, get it out of the way, keep going. Out, down, and up, out, down, and up. Slide the top, out, down, and up. And I just keep doing formula A until yellow is on top on all of my sides. And then we check to see if the sides match. At this point, either all sides match, none of them match, or one of them matches. And here we've got. Oh, I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> I started solving it. <laughs> I was trying to solve it by shape, not by color, so that I could I could better twist the center rows. So I was getting confused. Let's do that again. Line up the centers. Okay. Um, just bring any any solid color to the top. Okay. Slide the top. Any solid color to the top. Okay, and then so the, and then flip flip it over, bring the other solid corners to the to this side, solving by shape and not by color, so I can continue my scramble. <laughs> I'm easily distracted. Okay, so solid corners on top, solid corners on top. The center is straight. Now, with my yellow and white left and right, I'm going to move anything that is yellow or white out to the side. Okay. This Once there's no more yellow or whites in the middle, I check the sides. This one needs to be displaced. Okay. Um... Move pieces, move the yellow and whites out to the side. Okay. And so now I can twist the centers where, there, where there's not any organization. Make them look random. And when it looks confusing enough, then I can scramble it again and to for solve. Okay. 
Do, 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 do. Good morning. Good afternoon. Rockin'. Regress. Sorry I wasn't here this morning. I was babysitting my grandbaby. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's. Do, so, they. I have two of these. One of them, the center whites and yellows are one piece instead of three. And the, and this is the this is the B. This is the form, uh, second formulation where it the center is stri striped as well. So. Let me start, I'll just start with the yellow center. And I'm going to, I'm going to start solving this one until you guys pop in with questions. So, uh, I make sure my center is horizontal on each four sides. And when it is, then it'll stay that way. So I'm going to bring yellow to the top. Here's a yellow to the top, so we'll start here. Um, yellow on one of these two corners. Formula A brings it to the top. Okay, slide the top to protect it and continue with this one. It's not yellow, so let's bring a yellow into place and formula A will bring it to the top. Slide it out of the way, keep going. As long as there's a yellow one or here or here. Can you guys hear me okay? My air can my heater just clicked in and it's noisy. All right, so when the yellow, when your active color is on top on all four sides, you check the corners to see if they match. Either all of them match, none of them match, or one of them match. Green does not equal orange, blue does not equal green, orange does not equal blue, but red equals red. So red is my matching side, it faces away from me. And I do formula B, which moves three pieces around. These two move over here, so they stay in cr the correct same location to each other and this one goes over here so it has the visual effect of these two staying the same and these two, these two switching but be, be, the way it also includes that uh, twisted of the a twist of the cor of the layer itself so you're never moving two pieces you're always moving three formula a to bring the yellow back to the top And now the sides match. When the yellow is done, flip it over. Continue with your second four corners. These ones are already at the t top, so I'll, leave, I'll start here. Formula A to bring the other whites to the top. Slide the top. Keep the cube stable. And as long as you don't rotate the cube, uh, Formula A and Formula B are not going to mess up the first, the rest of the cube that's 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 already done. So our four, our, our four yellows, they'll dance around a little bit while we're doing our formula, but uh, by the time we're, we've, we've finished our six set, they will be back where they, the way they were and we are not messing them up. If you look at them while you're still in the middle of your process, you can get confused and say, oops, yellows are messed up, let's start again. But no, they're not really messed up. You can trust your yellows because formula A and formula B do not mess them up. So white's on top, check the sides. Red does not equal blue, orange does not equal red. And we've got the green side that matches. If none of them match, it doesn't matter how you hold it to do the next step. You're going to do formula B and A to bring it to the top, and then you're going to check again, and one side will match. But if one side matches, you hold it to the back, and you do formula B. Down, down. And A to bring your whites back to the top. Keep the cube stable, slide the top. And when the whites come to the top again, the sides will all match. So the first four, first four corners and second four corners are all done the exact same way. Now that the second four corners are happy with each other and the first four corners are happy with each other, you slide, rotate the top as needed until the top and bottom are matching. And now your eight corners are done. Regardless of which cube you had, regard, every cube has the eight corners. They're all solved the exact same way, so you can start and do the same thing with every cube that you have. Okay, so 
Um, I, this is not a speed solving method. This is not the fewest moves method. Uh, it is lousy with regrips. The moves are inefficient. Um, but it is when I teach it, uh, total teach time inside of two hours, and you can walk away with knowing how to solve every complex D Rubik's cube. Uh, so um, from <laughs> my my my, uh, my landlord lady roommate who said that she couldn't learn because she had a brain damage. She'd been in a car accident. Um, <laughs> I said, well, do you want to learn? She says, yeah, I'll try, but, I, uh, but don't count on anything. And two hours later, she was borrowing my 6x6 six six to go show her friends. Uh, there's only one person I haven't been able to teach, and that's my sister, because she's just as stubborn as I am, and she, realized, she just decided that it was too hard. <laughs> so everyone else that I has ever wanted to learn has been able to learn, as far as I know. Uh, and so this is, if you have non-cuber friends who say, just tell me the secret. I don't want to really, I don't want, I don't want to be a, master, a, a speed solver, but just tell me the secret so I can just like solve the cube. This is that secret. Published um, in 2000 and in, in 2020, uh, the year of COVID. And uh, I believe it's the newest and I, I'm pretty sure it's the simplest. So, my corners are done, and so those corners dictate what color each face is going to be. We used to work around the absolute center. Where? We used to work around the absolute center because the absolute center didn't change in relation to itself. And, but that went out the window when we came up with the 4x4, four four because then you could... But the corners can only be correct to, each, to themselves in one, in one position. So this dictates what the side the colors are. I've been training my eyes to look for the yellow and white, so I'm going to keep looking for the yellow and white. So I'm holding my cube. Um, so I've, I've so far I've just used formula A and formula B. Formula A brings a piece to the top. Formula B moves three pieces around. We're going to continue that. Uh, I don't need to use formula A because I worked around the absolute center here. But if I hadn't done that, let's say. Let's say I want to move the screen piece to the top. Out, down, in, up, with the, uh, the using the absolute center and the absolute for the row and column, and that gives you boxes. So again, here's my here's my yellow wants to move to the top. Okay. So line it up here. For the 3x3 three three, I have to be careful. I can't just go like this, out, down, in, up, because then these are facing the wrong direction. And I can't turn to the middle. So, I get back to where it was. There we go. So, to bring it, I bring it to the, I line it up where under where it wants to be. I move it out, down, in, up, and there it is. And my centers are still horizontal. So at this point in time, I hold my cube, yellow and white are left and right, and I'm looking in the center rows, center columns, for anything that is yellow or white so I can throw it to the outside, because we established that formula B moves a piece, moves three pieces around. Now, when we worked on the, when this, those three, two columns were the outside columns, it moved the corners, but if we, if we, we don't have to memorize which two columns do which and keep that in our head, we just have to pick a piece that wants to move, and determine which way it wants to move. So I'm going, so this yellow is yellow with a side of red. So I'm going to bring the corners together as a, as a unit to match this, the, the, the front. So corners match the front. The, the yellow is going in this side because white's on this side. It, it's going, so the yellow and red and something is going to land above the yellow red something, or the yellow and red edge piece is going to land above the yellow and red something corner. Uh, or it's going to land above the white and red, but we don't want to go this direction, we're running this direction. So it's B as written. This top row, first column is where it's going to land, second column is where it begins. So if this is B as written, so I move it away. First thing you do, the, the action is taking place on this side, this row. So I move this piece away from the action so it doesn't get caught up in it. And then I go first up, back, second up, now it's placed. Reverse, down, back, down. And we do this one, we're just placing pieces one at a time. Here's another yellow. Yellow and white are left and right, but we want the yellow on front, on the front. Bring the corners to match the front. 
going in the white or yellow direction, so this way, so first column, second column, all the way up, up, down, down, okay? And we're just placing pieces one at a time. And we're going to do this for as long as there's a yellow or white somewhere in the middle areas. The corners match the front, going in this direction, so this is my first, second, up, up, down, down, Corners match the front, determine its direction, move it away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. Uh, if the, your yellow or white's on front, you flip it so it's on top, but yellow and white are left and right. Bring the corners to match the front, and then determine its direction, begin by moving away. First column is where it's going to land, second column is where it begins and down. Okay, here's another one. We just keep going, leather rinse, repeat. Corners match the front, it's going in this direction, up, up, and when I, when I have no more yellows or whites in the middle, then it's time for me to assess. But in the meantime, I just keep doing yellows and whites, moving yellow, yellows and whites from the middle, front middle, front, top, to the front side. Corners match the front, going in the white direction, away up, in, up, away down, in, down. And you can tell by because they turn that where there's no more yet white, yellows or whites in the middle area. So we assess. Um, because they're they're all my yellow and whites are all on the sides, but they may they may or may not be correctly placed. One of them might not have might have been placed incorrectly and not get displaced in the process. So these three are correct to each other. This this row is correct to each other. So the yellows are happy. Yellows are correct. Let's look at the whites. Um, this side is correct. This side is correct. This side is correct. This one is not. Uh, I can so I can displace a piece into here, which will move it to the top, and then I can place it correctly in, and it'll be matched. However, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that step because for my next step, now that the opposite edges are done. My next step is to do the side edges, and to do that I have to displace one of my correct pieces. So I'm just going to this place that's not correct, that's in the right place but not correct, I'm going to use that one to displace, so I don't care. Uh, normally it's yellow I displace, but I'm displacing this white. So uh, I've, I'm looking, the, the column, the, the row that I'm working on now is the center row. Cause, so the, the top row, the, the, out, the top and bottom rows are correct. And so the center road, center one is, is correct. My white, my center piece is correct. So I'm going to play, and I've got it in between the, where it wants to be. So I'm going to displace this piece because this, the piece between the green and red should be green and red, and it's blue and orange. So this one is not correct. So I'm going to displace this piece here, and that will bring that piece to the top where I can work on it. So my yellow is now face down for the rest of this, this set. So out, up, in, up, out, down, in, down, and I know that the cube in your hand doesn't look like the cube in my hand, so if you tell me what the cube in your hand looks like, I'll be happy to mirror the actions that your cube needs. Also, I, am, I do have a Zoom meeting room, so I can teach up to four people at a time uh, in real life. In, or in real time, uh, I just zo just game capture the Zoom meeting, and <laughs> I can see what your cubes are doing. So if you have any non-cuber friends who want to learn, that would be fun for me. So um, yellow face, yellow is down. I'm looking for the piece on the top that's not the top color, and it's this one. It's the so it's blue and orange. So holding the top row, I rotate the rest of the cube until the corners match the front. So I bring the blue corners to the front. Okay, so corners match the front. I'm only looking at the little middle one because I'm moving all three of them. But I'm the I'm going I'm treating the yellow one as special, the middle one as special. So it's blue matches the front. It's going the orange direction. So this blue and orange edge piece is going to go above the blue and orange something corner. And this one has red. So this one has orange. So it's going to land in this column. So this is my first column. This is my second column. I start by moving it away, up, 
up, down, down, and there it is, happily snuggled right between its own color. Next one is this blue and red. Bring the corner to match the corners to match the front. It's going in the red direction, so this way. Out, up, in, up, out, down, in, down. And there it is, happily between its two colors. Another edge piece on top that's not that's not the top color. Corners match the front. It's going in the red direction. So it will land where this piece is. Up, up, down, down. And there it is, happily placed. One more. Okay, white came back, uh, uh, top color came back to the top, so now I reassess, now I assess. I'm checking to see if the corners, if, the, if that row is correct. So this one is correctly placed, this one's correctly placed, this one's in the right spot but needs to be flipped. So I'm going to, to do, I'm going to take my incorrect spot up here, I'm going to put it into this spot to displace it, that'll move it to the top, and then I'll bring it back to the front and place it correctly, and then it will be correctly placed, that, that always flips two edges, so, because you can never flip just one. So I'm going to, don't bite my foot, kitty. Don't. I did not say bite my foot. Here, go play with your fishy. Here, go play with your fishy. Okay, so I'm going to displace it with this piece. Up, up, down, down, and then it's on. It's on. It's on the top. Bring it back to bring the corners back to match the front and it wants to in this direction which will displace this one so it looks like I, it looks like i only used two pieces but i used two plus this back one and the back one was moved forward twice so it ended up in the same place now i line up the top and so if you look at if you look at it and kind of squint your eyes the top center and bottom rows are correctly done Okay, so this is as much as you could solve if it were a 3x3. Three three. <clears throat> the, the next step is to do my centers, and some of them I can just, uh, I can just force into place. So I can do that for the white, for instance. I can bring it down and bring them into place and back up again. But that didn't do anything for my yellows, so the yellows I have to do uh, the same. I have to do the formula that matches all the rest of the yellow, the centers will be done. So I'll come. I'll come back to that. I don't have to do that right now. But uh, let me do the edges are next. Now here's here's where the adaptation comes in. Uh, when I first got the three by nine, I didn't know how to do it, and so I tried watching YouTube tutorials. And for a solid month, I found a different tutorial every day and tried to memorize, tried to work with it, tried to memorize it, tried to figure out what it was doing. And it was just a big old long algorithm. And it, <laughs> it just said, this algorithm is going to move these things around. So hold your cue so that when those things move around, it'll be advantageous. And then do this pattern and then reset your cube and see what you need to do next. And I'm just like, I am not smart enough for this. So after a month <laughs> of feeling <laughs> stupid because I couldn't understand what everyone else was trying to teach me. Okay, don't bite my foot. Stop it. Then I took one of my big cubes like this and said, all right, let me just pretend I can't move my yellows or whites. What Because so, the, the B, like I said, it's left and right and then you, you can't. You can't turn it. So I made the adaptation of every horizontal being two moves instead of one move. And then I said, okay, if I do that, what does my formula B do? And I found out that what my, what my formula B does, okay, so I pick a column, and then this, its opposite column, up, up, down, down, okay. What did it do? Well, it did something with my centers on two sides, not the other sides. And it did, it did something with these two edges. It flipped these. 
and it flipped these. So it did a, it did it did the centers. I was ignoring the centers, and I was, it moves three things on the left, but only one three things on the right, but only one thing on the left. So I said, okay, I'm just going to I can I can do that. Let's see what let's let's set. Let's just set from the right to the left one piece at a time until the left side is correct and see what happens then. Um, while doing so, we do this again. Up, up. So that's one, one, one formula A does that. Two formula, B, formula A's. What did I do? I'm confusing myself. Up, up, down, down, okay. All right, so an even number of formula A's puts my edges back to where, the way they were. So odd number switches these and these, even number puts them back. So then I can see that the centers are being moved around. So starting with the edges first, so we're the yellow and white are left and right, as I've said, and the center is done. <coughs> and I'm looking for pieces on my left that want to go to my right. Uh, so in here in between the red and green e edges, here's a red and green that's in, that, that, that wants to go over there. So I'm going to look and see if there's any more that wants to go over there. One, two, three. Uh, okay, so this one wants to go over and land here. Uh, this one's in the correct, its correct place, but it wants to over, but, but can be moved. And for this piece, I'm going to find a piece that's correct and put it over. Okay, so these two are correct to the right side, and this one is not at once to go over here, but all three of these need to be moved. So I'm going to treat these three as one piece, and I'm going to land them here. Now we know that these ones flip, and these ones flip. So what I, if I want this one to place here, I need to separate them. So I put this space down and the, the pieces to the back. And so now these are going to flip. We don't care, but these are going to flip. So they will, they will land between the red and the green. So let's do that. So we go up, up, down, down. And there they are. This one's correct, and these ones are incorrect, but they moved other pieces out so I could work on them. Okay, so let's see. Let's work it. Let's look, take the next, the next uh, edge. So here between the two blood, red, blue, and red, we've got some blue and reds that want to go on the other side. Let's see. One, two, three. This one is correct, but this one is not. So I'm going to place these two incorrect and this in the correct one over here. And that will give me more things to work with on the right. So I separate them. So these two are going to switch. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. Okay, and that happened. Okay, so now we're looking between the uh, between the yellow and blue, orange and blue. So anything on the right here that wants to go over to the left? One, two. Three. Okay, these are going to go over and land correctly. This one would displace whatever's here, but this one's already correct, so I'm not going to use this one. I'm just going to use these two. So I separate them. Slide up, up. Slide up, up. Slide down, down. And slide down, down. And those are correctly placed now. Okay, so we're getting there. So let's look at the next le next layer. This is between so between the green and the orange. We've got these these green and oranges. All three of these want to play over here. So again, separate them. The adapted is up, up, down, down. So that's correct. We're getting there. And then this one, we have two that need to flip. So one, two, there they are. So these ones want to go here. This one, this one layer is already correct. So I separate them. So these one, they're here. This is the space and this is the piece. Slide up, slide 
up, slide, down, slide, down. Okay, and we're getting there. So here there's one more, only one more piece here. Um, get both together. There's a one, two, three. This is the piece that wants to go over here. So I separate them. Up. Okay. Slide up. Slide up. Slide down. Slide down. And we're getting there. So this one's correct. This one's correct. This one. So the left side is now correct. And so uh, the right side has been doing dancing with itself, and it's either going to be correct or it's going to have uh, have a parody. And parodies, we know parodies are a lie. A parody is always caused by the center being a quarter turned off. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, the oranges are correct on this row, and there, there's a parody there. The oranges are correct on this row, and there's the same parody there. Uh, the oranges are correct on this row, but the oranges are correct on everyone in this row. So these two rows both have a parity, and parities are always caused by the centers being one quarter turn off. So as I'm, and as I'm working, as I'm moving things around, these ones, we already know that formula B is going to switch these back and forth each time. So I don't care about, if I, if I displace something out, that's one, and then if I place it correctly, that's plus four, so that'd be five, so this will go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and it'll end up correctly. So, my, the quarter turn I'm going to make is, instead of on this one, is going to be on this side. So, this is the, this, these two are my quarter turn off. So, I offset that a quarter turn, okay? And then I'm going to displace them and place them correctly in its current position. So, up. And in doing so, my parity will disappear. Down. Oh, I went the wrong direction. Go back, go back. What did I do? What did I do? I don't know what I did. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Um, I got confused because okay, here's what I did. Here is how you can make a mistake with this with this pattern. I got confused looking at the centers instead of the edges. Okay? I saw these two and thought, oh, these two columns. But it was these two columns I was working on, and so I offset that the wrong way. So, up, up, down, down. Okay. I don't think I did that right. So let's look again. I got everything right on this side. Okay, so that's okay. This is called practice. All right, so I'm going to flip. Yellow is my left. So my left side is not now correct. I'm going to work on these sides. Uh, this one is correct. This one, here's my parody right here. Okay, and so this time I'm going to ignore my centers, which I should have done, but because I was working, I tap, I went over, and, and instead of working with these ones, these ones lined up, so I went the way I, I did. I, I skipped my steps. I skipped my columns. I was not honest with the columns that I was using. So let me try that again. So it's the two that are net closest to the middle that I'm doing. So slide up, slide up slide down, slide down, and that put these ones here. So looking at the, looking at these, they want to go between the yellow and between the, the yellow and between the blue and the orange. So I'm lining them up and then I separate them and I go up, slide hi kitty. You're trying to confuse me again. <clears throat> it's probably going to work. Up, up, down, down. And so that one is placed. And so these now want to land. Nope. Which ones want to, which ones am I working on now? So this is correct, this is correct, this is correct. Okay, so now they're correct. 
so you are confusing me kitty this is fluffer bunny fluffer bunny is the greatest cat in the whole entire world except for your cat i'm sure your cat is is a wonderful cat yes you're so pretty yes you're so pretty yes you're so pretty yes go away good boy good girl go away <laughs> And she moved my camera as well. All right. So that was practice again, like I said. All right, so left side is correct. Right side has the parity identified. So I'm going to offset that. The quarter, I'm going to make my quarter turn. And then I'm going to, five, five, I'm going to displace this to the here and then place it uh, five times. So let's do that. Place it four times. So up, up, down, down. Okay, now this lines up to here, wants to go right there. So I separate them. Up, up, down, down. And what happened before was I, I made my quarter turn and then I undid my quarter turn on accident. So two quarter turns is the equivalent of not having a quarter turn. So this one's gonna go here. I separate them. Up, up, down, down. Okay, and these now want to go here, so I separate them. Up, up, down, down. And one more, these want to go here, so I separate them. Up, up, down, down. Okay, and so now my edges are correct. Ta-da, all of my edges are correct. Okay, um, here's a good time for me to fix my yellows. Okay, so I'm going to, I, I need to bring the yellows down so they can be worked on. If I bring them down this way, they don't turn, so that's not the correct way. I have to bring the yellows down this way. Then I don't want to displace this one. I want it to be worked on, so I'm going to move that out of the way. So I'm bringing my yellows down here. Okay, formula B will move from the top from the front to the top and it won't mess up the other side so this white is going to stay the way it is so now um, we've established that the way to move the centers or the way to move the edges around is formula B once and if you do formula B twice then the, set, the edges go back to the way they were so and the centers do their thing so if I want to work on the centers I need to do the quarter the formula B twice instead of once hi kitty go away shoo 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 great kitty okay so I've got it lined up, okay? I want this white, this yellow is gonna, gonna line, line up right here. So I move it slice up, slice up, slice down, slice down. And again, because I don't wanna mess up my edges. Up, up, down, down. Okay, so in sets of two. Okay, now once again, this piece, so this piece went up, this piece went down, and this piece went over. So once again, so I line it up, okay, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and again, up, up, down, down, to the top. And I can bring those yellows back to the top again, and I can reset that offset one. And so everything is still, I had, again, formula A and formula B does not mess up anything except for what you want to mess up. So now, now that the edges are done, all that's left is the centers, and those are going to be done using formula B and set, be adapted in sets of two. Because one is going to switch two sets of edges and two is going to switch them back again so we pretend that didn't happen. So here are some blues that want to go in this direction. 
<coughs> um, I can either the, I can either affect this green and this red, or this blue and this orange. It's better for me to not bring the orange down to the red, so I'm going to work on these two, so they're lined up. Okay. So this is the column that I'm working with. These are the two that I'm working with. Okay. They're going to land here, so I bring it over here. First up, back, second up, first down, back, second down. Keep going. First up, second up, first down, second down. Okay, and these did land right there. Okay, we've got two greens here. Um, I can, I can, if I treat them as one, I'm either going to working with this orange and red, or this orange and red, so I'm going to do them individually. So I'm going to start with the outside one, lined up to this red, so away, up, back, up, slice, down, slice, down, and again, up, up, down, down, and then we pretend that the edges didn't do anything. Okay? And so again, this is lined up. 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 Down. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Okay. Uh, green to yellows. I want to get the, bring these reds down, so I can do them. I, I have to do them one at a time. So I'm going to bring. So this one is lined up. So slide up, slide up, slide <coughs> down, <coughs> slide down, up, up, down, down at the top and here's another one this one wants to land here so that'll bring this red down actually it's going to bring the red down over here because the screen's going to come over we're moving three pieces at a time never two so slide up slide up slide down slide down again up up down down and like I said, they didn't line up. So here's these two blues. They want to go where these two oranges are. So they're lined up. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, set the top. Okay? So here's a blue. Wants to go here to where the green is. Here's a Orange that wants to come up here, but if I do the orange, put the orange up here, the blue will get in the opposite. So let's put the blue here first, <coughs> and then do the orange. So up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Okay. So that blue is correct. The green needs to do an opposite. That's okay. Let's bring this orange up, then the orange is correct. Slide up, and you just pick a piece that's wrong, throw it in the direction it wants to be, and then choose again. Down, up, up, down, down, and I messed up. <laughs> because I tried to do it while I was talking. Okay. So let's just practice because these ones are correct. So it's these two plus this one. Okay. <sighs> okay, so I'm looking for the green and red, which is right here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to put it up. I'm going to separate them. And up. Up. Down, down, and there is the parody. So undo the parody. 
This is just so you can see the parodies. Okay, so the, I'm going to displace this this piece. This piece wants to be here, so I'm going to displace it and then put it there, put, put them back again. So again, when there's a parity, the quarter turn the center is a quarter turn off, so I'm going to set, leave this one alone and do my quarter turn over here, and then solve these for in that orientation. Up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Why did I do two? I shouldn't have done two. I should have done once. I'm stuck on, you do two for the centers, not the edges. <laughs> All right. So this piece then wants to go here. So I separate them. Be adapted once, not twice. So I'm working on edges again. I forgot I was working on edges. Okay. And then separate them. Up. Up. Down. Down. And again, separate them. Up. Up. Down down okay and then one more last one up up down down stop thank you okay all right so edges are done again despite my mix-up that's okay and so working on the centers here's there's the orange, wants to go there. Up, up, down, down, and again, up, up, down, down. Okay, now these, okay, we can move these greens up to here. Slide up, slide up, slide down. Slide down and slide up, up, down, down. We're going to be invaded again. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty, kitty. Okay. Um, if I move the reds to the red side, the blue will come down. So let's move the blues in instead. Hi. Yes, you're very beautiful. Yes, you are very, very beautiful. Yes. Now, shoo, go away. Or sit there. I don't care. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to move these blues up. Okay, so this one's lined up. We go up, up, down, down. Hi, beautiful kitty. Up, up, down, down. Okay, and then this blue is lined up with this green. So up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. And then with these ones, and then the, just these last two are the only ones left. Okay. I can do them together or I can do them singly. So let's do up, up. Second up, down, down, up, up, down, down. So yes, formula A and B works on every size complexity Rubik's cube. Uh, minor adaptation for the for the banded cubes. And it also works on all of the minxes as well. If anyone wants to join me on Zoom, join me on Zoom when I do my when I do any of my streaming, just uh, drop me a line. Let me know. Uh, drop me a chat. Let me know what you want that you want to, and I will set that up. So it <coughs> takes a couple minutes to set it up, but I can. All right. Um, Questions, queries, comments before for anybody before I go take my medicine. <laughs>
I appreciate you guys. All right. Well, tomorrow is a weekday. Tomorrow is Saturday. I uh, hope you have lots of wonderful plans. Go be nice to yourself. And I will see. I'll be back here tomorrow. Um, bye.